Alvin, your time has come, amigo. Put your Dave meat on the bench last Friday, and I was shocked to find what I found. I did a lot of different things to this amp that I can't necessarily charge the customer for, but because my name is associated with it, I had to make it at least right. Alvin bought this amp from these guys. They sent it to him. He looked at it and says, man, i got to have a variable. i got to have sideband delay. I'm going to use it on sideband. And he couldn't even get them to answer the phone. So in the mail it come, come up here to old BBI. And the first thing I did, because I've noticed with these guys, they're becoming, I'm not going to talk bad about anybody, just not. I popped the bottom of the tin off, and what did I find? No blocking. And what do I mean by that, and how important is that? Well, it's pretty vital, and it's very important. First thing I did is I put this aluminum tape down that blocked off the pill holes. Next thing I did is I built this block, this air block here. So when the fans are blowing on the top side, they overpressurize the inside of the cabinet. The air flows in across all the components and flows across the heat sink and exhausts out the back of the cabinet. Well, air is a lot like water. It's going to take the path of least resistance. Now, I don't know about you, I like to have the air move across my heat sink wick away all the heat and exhaust it out the back side of the cabinet because it'll take the path on least resistance if there's a big opening here and there's a bunch of openings here air is going to flow down flow down it's going to skip right over the heat sink and go out the back of the cabinet nothing's ever going to get cooled yeah you got air blowing on the top of the parts but this isn't very effectively doing its job I added this little aluminum bus Put a piece of gasket material on the bottom cabinet, stick it on. You'll have laminate and force pressurized directional airflow. Now to all those people out there that are amp guys and uh, watch my videos, and I'm looking for a cabinet guy right now. I am. I love this style of cabinet that Dave made's got that's completely modular. I think it's a brilliant design. I'd like to do something different. I'd like to do it with exhaust vents differently and the top of the cabinet differently. And I wouldn't want to do the sanitization, any kind of touch on the sanitization and it scratches. But uh, I am in the market for a cabinet guy. So if you're watching this video and you own a metal fab shop, feel like mocking me up some test stuff, let's talk. Because I'm interested. Back to the project at hand. This beautiful little 2x6. Now this is two 2879s driving six 2879s and they're Toshibas. Now they're the really good ones. Um, for some reason I noticed here a couple months ago the IJ lot have a really really high gain. Um, a new transistor is normally anywhere between 76 and about 80. These are testing in the high 90s to 100s. So you're going to see a higher wattage performance from anything with the IJs in it. it. It just is what it is. The lots, when you order them, you get what you get. But the average is 75, 80, 70, 85, 80. IJs, up in the hundreds. I added a ground strip for you, man. I cleaned off the anodization coating underneath and I added this so it's directly grounded to the body of the amp, to the board, so you can have uniform ground. I changed your output tune so it wasn't all spread out like a butterfly. I brought it back together so it's normal, tight, air coiled. Reduces your harmonics, allows for better tuning. Redid your tuning capacitor. Actually added resistors. The combiner circuit had no resistors on it whatsoever when it came in the door. Like I said, I added your bias upgraded your power wire. It had three caps when it came in here. They were all different voltages and all different values, which isn't necessarily what you want to run. It's kind of a bad idea for multiple different reasons. But I went ahead and I added your sideband delay. It's on this switch here, and it'll be labeled by the time you get it. I went ahead and I flipped around your on-off switch, so on is now up instead of down. It never made any sense why they did that because when you put the cabinet upside down so the on off switch is on, you're blocking the fans, you're getting no airflow, it is what it is. Added your variable. And I redid your input. I 
when I mean input, I mean input to the six pill section. The primary input's right here that your radio sees. This is your splitter, splits the RF three different ways uniformly, one to one. Goes to the inputs, and then you got your output, and then you got your final combiner. That being said, this box really performs now. When I first tested it, I couldn't get it to do over 1100 watts, and that was on 14 volts. We're going to re-emulate this test. We're going to use 14 volts, 1000 watt slug, 5 watt slug in reverse, we're in PEP and 1x position. We're using the old 66V, putting about 20 watts worth of drive into it, and let's see what it does. Oh, let's demonstrate what uh, a watt and a half gets you as a dead key. Variables all the way open. So the RF comes in, goes through the variable, and goes directly into the input tune of the two pill driver section. Gotta be careful, man. You got two 22 or 2879s driving six 2879s. It's a little hot. So you put a 100 watt radio on it, yeah, you're gonna get more wattage out of it. Well, it won't last. Here's your input tune. This is represented by Siltronics, five watts in reverse. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna move our variable. And now we'll take it all the way down. Hello, 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 hello. We're gonna show you our dead key from max to minimum. This is with a two watt dead key going into the amplifier and we're just turning down the variable on the front of the box. So you're in a 480 watt dead key, maxed out. Slowly turn it down. There's 400, 300, 200, and 100, and it bottoms out at 100, and that's with the variable all the way down. Let's see what we're getting out of it for high-end watts. And we're burying it on the 1,000-watt scale. Hello, BBI. Check out. Hello, BBI. Okay. Here's a 2x marker. 2x, as we all know, everybody watches all my videos, 1,000 watt slug has now been multiplied, so this is reading as a 2,000 watt slug. Right there is 1,000 watts, a 50 mark. 1,000 watt slug on face value is 1,000, take it to 2x, it's going to be 50. Now it goes up in integers of 200, boys and girls. So from here to here is 1,200, from here to here is 1,400, here to here is 16, some change. Okay. What y'all just seen was about 1550 BBI. on 167 amps. Hello, BBI. Hello, BBI. And that's on 14 volts flat. This box is perfect. And I mean perfect. Let's throw the 60, uh, the 955 on it and see what we get. Be right back. So we've got the 955 in line, and this is not the way I suggest you drive this box. I'm just saying that it can be done. And remember, we're just getting short of 1500 out of it, right? Hello. 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 Now you're getting 15 plus, 1680 according to the LP100A. Oh, by the way, that video is coming out too, guys. And you're going to be shocked to see what the results are I got on that. It's a good meter. Anyhow, man, slap the tins on it. I'm going to give you a call, tell you what the total is. This box is 100% right. 14 volts and getting 15, 1600 watts out of a 2x6 mobile. My name is BBI. Obviously, there's no shame to my mud ducking game because I got it going on in Tater Town. I'm here to tell you what. Come check us out www.bbiamps.com. One more dude is now 10 8, and the haters can suck it. <laughs> I'll see you. I appreciate everybody sending their stuff up to let me work on it. I'll see you. Bye.